Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at an interesting change here. You may be able to see here that I'm at, well I was at 100 health and now that this enemy is hitting me, my health is slowly going down. It's not going down with every hit because we have a cooldown that is not being visually shown here. But every time the enemy is hitting me outside the cooldown, the health is going down. So we're almost there, approaching really good hit zero. And with this last hit, bam. And I have respawned here in the beginning of the level. Of course this guy is coming back to get me. <laughs> so let's see how this is built. If you go here to the player prefab here we have an on death event here that we're using where we're now calling this death handler. We actually also have a respawn point added here at the bottom. So let's go into the code and see how that's looking. In the player damageable here we have a few additions. As you saw we have a respawn point here and we also have two private variables. I know we are screen fade and a player controller. We're setting this up in the start method, but we could just as easily make them serialized fields and just populate them through the editor. Either way could work. In fact, the editor method could be more robust since finding object of type will only work if we only have one of these in the scene. Then here we have the death handler, which is simply calling a coroutine here called death sequence. And in the death sequence, we have a few steps. We first fade the camera out, then we respawn the player, then fade the camera back in. And we have a final step that is not implemented yet that is actually showing a nice UI to tell the player, hey, you died. And maybe tell them how not to die again or what happens when they die. Something to that effect to help the player out. So this is pretty straightforward. We're using the screen fade dot fade out, which this is something that the OVR screen fade provides. We can look into it. It's not particularly exciting. It's a coroutine itself that's it's handling the alpha of this prefab here over time, changing the alpha of this quad that is created here. It's a lot of cost to add a big quad that gets set to black and then gets fade in and out through the alpha. And that's being handled in a core routine. But since the Oculus SDK already has that set up, there's no need for us to go in and create that quad. And just so you know, the OVR screen fade script is actually tied to the center eye anchor here in the OVR player controller prefab that the Oculus SDK provides. So this is what we're using here. We're just getting a reference to this script and using the fade in and fade out methods on that. First we're fading out and then we're waiting till the alpha is greater than 0 0.1. It's actually wrong. It should be 0 0.9 because we want to be almost faded to black before we move forward. Then we deactivate the player controller game object, which is this one here. We deactivate the top level prefab here that's moving the player you can see here in the scene but this is the prefab that moves around and has all the cameras and basically the player avatar so we deactivate it we wait one frame then we move the player controller to the respawn point position and rotation we reset the damage for the player damageable here we're also triggering a zero damage event here so that we go through the loop of all the damage here this updates the health counter that you see on the left hand. In the future we could probably refactor this out so we don't have to do this zero event, especially if we're going to be calling sound effects or any visual effects on damage. But for now it's hacky but it updates the counter properly. Then we activate the player controller game object again. This activation and deactivation is so that we are not calculating any any velocity frames here because the player controller is actually a rigid body. So if we move it while active it will actually have a physics effect on the rigid body and it becomes pretty unreliable so setting it off first then moving it then setting it on or active true yields better results and then we wait one more frame here just to allow the physics calculation to happen after that we fade in again so we're at this point we're still in full fade to black so we are fading in here again so we go from black to being able to see the scene and then we can show the helper tip here we can if needed add another while alpha is greater than 0 0.1 here to wait around till the fading is complete before triggering whatever comes next but for now i think that we should just immediately show the helper tip here or whatever kind of ui we show to the player after death and then just for fun we're currently logging a you died event to the console though it's not really that necessary and that's really it. It's a very simple one. Let's just quickly 
look at it again so you can see it in action now that you know how it's built. So as you can see, the health is going down again. And of course, there's this cooldown, so there's some hits that are not actually causing damage. But once the cooldown is passed, then we are actually getting hit. And now we are at zero, boom. And then we respawn, we can see the counter hits 100 health again. And we're back in the original position. So that is it for this video. It was a really quick one just to show what happens when the player gets damaged and eventually runs out of HP and the sequence to handle that case and respawning the player in a safe space. For now, we are going with respawning on death. We could also go and open a menu or showing a continue screen or something like that. It totally depends on the flow of the, of the game and what we want to do, but for now, I think just respawning back at a safe location and allowing the player to continue to have another try is probably the easiest one. The next thing that we need to implement now is actually having some kind of penalty for the player dying. Just in general, whether we want to have them lose their items, for example, that happens. That's a common mechanic or just have the, their items drop where they, where they died and then they have to go and go back to where they died and pick them back up or just forfeit them completely. And there are other kinds, so you, they could lose some of their gold that they've collected, they could fail a quest, a number of things could happen, so that we can determine later. At this point, we're just setting up the systems, so that is all set up now. But yeah, that's going to be it for today. I hope that you found it useful and that it was, that it was useful to see it. I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.